we've already seen how to solve linear congruences. So by linear congruences, I mean congruences like AX is congruent to B uh, modulo M. Now let's attack some quadratic problems. Our specific goal is to find all the integers, x, so that x squared is congruent to 1 modulo 221. And if it's not immediately obvious, 221 is 13 times 17. We already know one solution. We know that if x is congruent to 1 modulo 221, then x squared is congruent to 1 modulo 221. This is really infinitely many solutions to the original problem because there's infinitely many integers x that satisfy the condition x congruent to 1 modulo 221. And we can do a little bit better even. It's good enough if x is uh, just congruent to plus or minus 1 modulo 221 because that's still the case that x squared is 1 mod 221. But are there any other solutions? Well, to find some others, we want to recall that 221 is 13 times 17. And consequently, uh, the condition that we want, x squared is congruent to 1 modulo 221, is exactly the same thing as x squared being congruent to 1 modulo 13 and x squared being congruent to 1 modulo 17. We can do this with the Chinese remainder theorem. To be precise, it's this implication that follows from the Chinese remainder theorem. Right? I want to know all of the x's that satisfy x squared congruent to 1 mod 221. It's enough to find all the x's that satisfy these two conditions simultaneously, all the x's so that x squared is 1 mod 13 and x squared is 1 mod 17. So let's try to explore these two conditions. I'm actually going to focus on the first. Let's just figure out for which integers x is it the case that x squared is congruent to 1 modulo 13. So to focus on that, Let's, uh, let's work on that right now. So I want to know when is x squared congruent to 1 modulo 13, right? That is the question that we want to answer first. Hmm. Well, I can think of some examples where I know this, this happens to work, right? If, uh, if x is just plus or minus 1 modulo 13, then it is the case that x squared is 1 modulo 13. So those are a couple situations where uh, it is the case that x squared is 1 modulo 13. Now, I'd like to be able to go the other way. I'd like to say that if x squared is 1 mod 13, then, then this is what it has to be so that I've actually found all of the possibilities. So let's start then going the other way. Let's suppose that x squared is congruent to 1 modulo 13. Then uh, what do I know? Hmm, well, from the definition of uh, what congruence means, uh, this means that 13 divides the difference of these things, x squared minus 1. And, well, that's kind of good because x squared minus 1 factors. So this is the same thing as saying that 13 divides x plus 1 times x minus 1. And this is moderately exciting because 13 is prime, right? So the fact that I've got a prime number dividing a product means it has to either divide x plus 1 or x minus 1. So let's record that. So either 13 divides x plus 1 or 13 divides x minus 1. Hmm. And then I could translate these back to some statement about congruences. So either, uh, well, in terms of congruences, this is saying x is congruent to minus 1 modulo 13, or x is congruent to 1, modulo 13. Uh, but when I write it out like this, this is exactly the same thing as saying that x is congruent to plus or minus 1, modulo 13. So I found a, a couple solutions, right? If x is congruent to plus or minus 1 mod 13, then x squared is 1 uh, mod 13. And on the other hand, if x squared is 1 mod 13, then x is congruent to plus or minus 1 uh, mod 13. So I've actually found all of the solutions, right? So I know I know exactly when uh, x squared is uh, 1 mod 13. It happens exactly when x is plus or minus 1 modulo 13. Now, what does that tell us about our original question, right? We originally wanted to explore uh, this question. We want to know for which values x is the case that x squared is 1 mod 221. And by the Chinese remainder theorem, this boils down to these two conditions. Well, we just figured out that uh, x squared is 1 mod 13 happens exactly when x is plus or minus 1 modulo 13. But 17 is just as prime as 13 is. So uh, these two conditions are actually equivalent to these two conditions. 
What that means is that x squared is 1 mod 221 exactly when x is plus or minus 1 mod 13 and x is plus or minus 1 modulo 17. So for this quadratic polynomial, we found four roots. So how do we get to four? Well, we've got uh, a few different possibilities here, right? We're looking for integers x so that x is plus or minus 1 modulo 13 and x is plus or minus 1 modulo 17. But there's four different possibilities for these SIGNs, these signs. So we could pick uh, both plus 1 and plus 1. And in that case, x is congruent to 1 modulo 221, again, by the Chinese remainder theorem. We could choose both of the SIGNs, both the signs, to be negative 1. And in that case, x is congruent to negative 1 mod 221. But we could also choose uh, two mixed signs, right? We could have one of these be uh, negative and the other one be positive. For example, if we chose x to be congruent to minus 1 mod 13 and x to be 1 mod 17, that would still uh, give us that x squared is 1 mod 13 and x squared is 1 mod 17. So it would still give us that x squared is 1 mod 221. But using these conditions here, we get that this is the same thing as x being uh, 103 mod 221. We could also choose x to be uh, 1 mod 13 and x to be minus 1 mod 17. And if we did that, then we'd find that x by the Chandra's major theorem is negative 103 mod uh, 221. And again, you know, even though these are maybe surprising, it is the case that if x is 103 uh, mod 221, then x squared is 1 mod 221. If you maybe don't believe this, you can do some arithmetic, right? You can check that 103 squared is 10,069, and 10,069 is just one more than a multiple of 221. So what this is telling us in summary is that... Uh, all of the integers x, so that x squared is congruent to 1 mod 221, those are exactly the same as the integers x, so that x is plus or minus 1, or x is plus or minus 103 modulo 221. And I think what's so disturbing about this is that it means that the polynomial x squared minus 1, well, it's a degree 2 polynomial, it's a quadratic polynomial, and yet it has four roots in the ring z modulo 221. Now, if that seems troubling, it gets worse. For example, in uh, this ring, in z modulo 221 brackets x, this polynomial, x minus 1 times x plus 1, is the same as the polynomial x minus 103 times x plus 103. I mean, what does this mean for uh, something like unique factorization in this ring? So working in z modulo 221 can get a little uncomfortable. And really, it can get a little uncomfortable anytime we're working in the ring z modulo a non-prime. But the reason to look at these examples isn't just to, to creep you out and to make you feel uncomfortable. The reason is to encourage you, uh, you know, to have some uh, uh, perseverance to do the hard work of proving things like unique factorization for just the regular old integers. You know, because I think when, when you see these examples of things that can go so wrong in a ring like Z mod 221, then you have to start to think, well, why do things work so well in the integers? And hopefully, you're well on your way to being able to prove some of the, the big theorems that we want to experience, like unique factorization for Z.